and in Italy, as archaeologists explore the ruins of Pompeii, new investigations shed light on the nature of the Roman family and the surprising role of slaves. Who do we live with and why? What can these ancient families tell us about our own family? Around the world, archaeologists are looking far beyond the palaces and temples into the households of common people, bringing families to life out of the past. What makes households so different from culture to culture? Archaeologists are looking for patterns in the past. Their search takes us back to a time when the home was the center of society, protected by the god of the hearth. These are the ruins of the ancient Maya, who flourished from the time of Christ to A.D. 900. At their height, Maya settlements spanned southern Mesoamerica, from the Yucatan in the north to El Salvador in the south. The Maya left behind dozens of cities, marked by tall pyramids and imposing statues. These remnants offered a portrait of the Maya elite. We want to deal with the common people, the people who are doing the farming, who are making the pottery, who are doing the, the work for supporting society. And it's about time we know something about them, how they lived. Were, were they really exploited? Were they living lives of desperation, just barely eking out an existence under the oppressive machinery of, of an exploitative government, um, or were their lives fairly rich? Um, did they have things of beauty in their houses? Um, what, how did they live? Was, did they have a variety of food stored in, in their houses? Did they, were they scrunched into scuzzy little spaces, or, or did they have some open areas and, and a comfortable life? That's what we're working on. Sometimes an archaeologist's search is helped by accident. In El Salvador, a bulldozer digging a foundation for a grain silo stumbled upon an old house. Could this be the evidence that Sheets was looking for? People in the area had seen well-preserved floor, good artifacts on the inside, thatch roof collapsed down onto the floor, but perfectly preserved. They all thought it's a recent house under a recent volcanic eruption. When I came here, I thought exactly the same thing, but being curious about things, I decided I'd like to know what it dated to. So pulling out my trusty trowel and scraping along the floor right along here, I found some pieces of pottery, but the pieces of pottery were all prehistoric, classic period pottery. Um, I was looking for a Coke bottle, a piece of plastic, some tin foil, something to give me an idea what the date of the structure was, only prehistoric pottery. So. Immediately, I perceived a powerful opportunity to really embarrass myself professionally by saying, Wow, it's prehistoric, it's fantastic, total preservation. Decided a eh, little bit of caution here before doing that and submitted a series of thatch samples for radiocarbon dating. And they all came back with an age of about 1,400 years. In Seren, El Salvador, archaeologists had stumbled upon a rare find, a building made from mud and thatch that should have disintegrated centuries ago. Yet here it was. How could it have been preserved for so long? The 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens provides a picture of what happened in Seren 1,400 years ago. You'd hear a big explosion because it happened all at once and you'd see a, a huge black cloud coming at you. When it hit you, it would hit with the temperature of boiling water. 
So it actually scalds the skin. And your first deep breath would be your last breath. Day after day, the volcano at Seren spewed tons of searing ash across the countryside. Everything within five kilometers was buried beneath the ash. The homes of the Maya were destroyed. Ironically, their way of life was preserved. People didn't abandon their things. They left things exactly where they'd placed them. And we have an opportunity to study people, their individual activities, what they did, their successes, their failures, their frustrations. And so it's an opportunity to study people and families like we've not had before in this area of the New World. In a test pit, the team looks for buried structures. There's still more houses lie beneath the sugar camp. After days of digging, the test pit is three meters deep. The workers have found a large piece of wood, maybe the remains of a roof timber. Using the test pit method, the team finds evidence of at least seven buried structures. Full excavation begins. Slowly, meticulously, the team begins to remove the volcanic ash. Weeks later, the ancient floors emerge, yielding the first clues of how these rooms were used. So anyway, we're really glad to find this. It's certainly not any one of your super elegant, towering um, pyramids like a Tikal. But for our purpose, it's super important to know where they actually did their cooking. They've uh, got round bottom pots, and what they do is they rest one of these round bottom pots, pots on the three points of contact and put firewood in from the side. The uh, people in the area still do that, and I think it's impressive to watch them constantly adjusting. Instead of going to the range and adjusting the, the amount of gas or electricity there, they're turning the firewood and keeping the fire just right. Here, in another structure, the team excavates a storeroom. Usually, archaeologists find only fragments of pots, but in Seren, huge vessels survive intact, protected for centuries by the soft ash. Amazingly, inside these vessels, the archaeologists find carbonized cacao seeds, squash, chilies, and beans. Bingo. The preservation at Seren is remarkable. Bit by bit, the team reconstructs the ancient Maya diet. In the storeroom, archaeologist Andrea Gersel measures the remains of a basket that once held corn. Corn cobs have been found in dry caves where no deterioration takes place, and you get a lot of detail in those instances. But in tropical climates, you wouldn't expect to find any remains at all. The level of preservation here is excellent, and it's because the corn was coated by a layer of superfine ash. That superfine ash was moist and hardened into a shell around the corn, and then the corn rotted away, leaving a hollow space. When we fill that hollow space with dental plaster, we can recover all of the details of the corn cob, even though we can't touch the corn cob itself, the original corn cob. This area is incredibly lush. It's incredibly rich in the variety of, of plants and foods, just wild foods that can be collected here today is, is marvelous. I imagine 1,400 years ago, the variety was at least as great. Um, and so I don't think living here would have been very difficult at all. At Seren, household members grew their own food and made their own tools, pottery, and clothes.
We usually think of subsistence farming as difficult and impoverished. But the evidence emerging at Seren challenges these assumptions. Quite frankly, we are surprised by the richness of material possession um, in, a, in a fairly broad sense. Beautiful polychrome painted gourds. And the amount of food they had stored in the house is fairly impressive. And the range of food. They're not just scrounging, not, not just sort of eking out in existence. They're really living quite well. It's a monkey tail, look at that. From mouse bones to axe blades, the details of daily life preserved at Seren astonish the archaeologists. But it is only a beginning. It will take several seasons to excavate the remains of an entire household and several decades to excavate the entire community. <laughs>